I'm Mike Cruz, manager of Greenpoint Fish Wholesale, and I'm here to show you how to prep every shellfish. When I prepare shellfish, I like to have three knives with me. A large, heavy-backed chef's knife, a smaller, curved, stiff knife for trimming, as well as a thin, flexible knife that is great for getting around shells and other intricate places. It actually has a really nice feature where it extends lobster and crab pickers, an oyster knife, which can get into the hinge really well, a clam knife, a shrimp divainer, a shellfish scissor, which is great for cutting through lobster tails without damaging any of the flesh. I have an offset spatula, and for special circumstances, we're gonna use a black light. Blue crab. So this is a blue crab, um, definitely native to East Coast waters. First things first, we're gonna steam this crab roughly six minutes. It'll turn bright red and it'll be ready to pick out all the meat. We'll pick the crab up, starting with its front claws. We'll just pinch straight from where it connects to the body, down and out. Same with the other side, down and out. And we'll do the same for all the legs and the back swimmers here. So now we're left with just the body. We'll flip the crab upside down and lift up the apron here. And this will just snap right off, exposing a opening there where we'll get our thumbs in and just peel off that top shell. Now here we have some gills, some other organs, and we're just going to remove those. This is the face plate, which will also just peel right off. Clean out any excess organs from the center cavity, and we're just gonna crack this right in half. Going to peel back these little layers of cartilage that hold the meat in, and using now our little picking tool to just very gently start pulling out that really delicate, sweet crab meat. The meat will be covered with a super thin membrane. It just really easily peels right off. And you essentially just want to get your skewer into any little crevice that you find and pulling straight out and getting out every little last bit of meat. That's your body. Now with the claws, separate out the pinchers, the legs, tiny little knuckles. We're just gonna come in on the most rounded part and just start snipping away. Crack that shell open and pry that claw meat right out of there. Also, the leg. There really isn't much meat in these little back legs here. The best thing I would do with these is just suck them dry. It's really delicious. And that's pretty much how you break down a blue crab. Soft shell crab. This is a blue crab that has molted. So basically they're changing shells and during this phase, their shells are soft. You can actually eat the whole crab this way, shell and all. Currently they are out of season. So right now we have a frozen soft shell crab. The head of the crab is here and that has a bunch of organs in it that we won't be eating today. Your first step is going to be just to snip right behind the eyes there, discard that section. After that, we'll flip the crab over. We'll remove this apron section here and lift up actually the top shell and expose the gills here. And we'll just trim those off. Same thing to the other side. So this is a completely dressed, ready to eat soft shell crab. This thing deep fried in a sandwich, perfect. Dungeness crab. These are a West Coast species of crab. Really, really sweet, really delicious, really tender meat. When purchasing all live shellfish, you wanna make sure that they're alive. Look at their eyes, make sure that they're convex and round, not concaved and sunken in. People tend to steam them mostly. You wanna aim for 10 minutes per pound, and you can add on about five minutes per pound after that. So this is a cooked Dungeness crab. We're gonna pick the crab up. And we'll start by just breaking claws off. From the joint down here, we're just gonna pull down and twist out. And we'll do that for all of these. You wanna really make sure you're at the joint when you do this. Now that the legs are removed, we're gonna start and just focus in on the head. Flip it over, and we're going to remove what is called the apron of the crab. This just pulls right out really easily. And now that leaves you with a cavity, put your thumbs in like that, and just pull back the head. This is what's called the uh, mustard of the crab, and this is really delicious, so do not throw it out and just hold it off to the side for now. So now we're just gonna focus in on the meat that is in the actual body itself. So we'll be taking off these gills here, which you do not wanna eat, any extra pieces that are kinda getting in your way with your hands for now. 
This is the mouth organs. We'll just snap those off easily. Now, crack this crab in half, which you can do with your hands. You'll just turn it away from you and just pull apart. One more time. So essentially you're cracking this into quarters. Once you have it broken down into quarters, you'll start to see there are little cavities that all contain the meat. With your skewer, go in there and just scoop around the cavities. They have sections of what almost looks like really thin plastic that separates all that meat. This easily can get into the meat itself, so you wanna be careful when you're doing this to kind of make sure that you're only getting the meat out of the crab. We're gonna move on to the legs. We're just gonna take them out. This first little digit here we can just remove and toss, and then we'll just break it down on the joints. I'll snap one way until it's free, and then coming out the other way. And ideally this will take out any pieces of cartilage with it. If you have a pair of shellfish scissors here, they're curved to avoid any meat. So you can just come straight in and just cut that. And you can crack the shell right open and pull out some really beautiful full pieces of crab leg. And we'll use our skewer just to scoop it out. So that's a leg, now we'll do a claw. Again, putting pressure on the opposite way of the joint. Remove this section first then the knuckle, and then the actual claw on the hinge. Just pop it once until it breaks on that side, bring it back the other way, and you should be pulling out that entire cartilage piece there that's right in the middle of all the meat in your claw. Take the scissors, and we're just gonna cut. Go through the knuckle, through the claw. going on these. Really beautiful, full piece of leg. And that's how you pick crab legs. A great way to find any extra pieces of shell that may be stuck in your crab meat is a black light. Yeah, I think that was everything. Main lobster. You always want to have a live product. With lobsters specifically, and most shellfish generally, you never want to be eating a lobster that's been dead for more than 24 hours. The meat within their bodies decays very quickly, so essentially having a live lobster in front of you tells you, I know this is safe, I know this is fresh, I know this is gonna be delicious. Before you cook it, you're going to want to kill it in the most humane way possible. Put your knife in at the base of the head where the body meets, press straight down, and just crack down. There may be some residual movement, but that's just the nervous system firing. You can continue your cut if you wanted, straight down the middle if you were looking to grill the tails. But either way, your lobster is now ready to be prepped. Take off these bands, which are just there to protect you from getting pinched. Pick the lobster up by the body, hold it pretty firmly. And you're gonna wanna get the tail pretty much where the joint meets the body. Twist one way, twist another way just to loosen it up, and then go a full rotation with it while pulling out. So there you'll have your lobster tail. You'll come around to the front side of the lobster and grabbing the claw from where it connects to the body, pinch right there and just twist and pull out. Same thing to the other side. And then these small legs separate out one by one. So here you'll have your tail, your pincher, your crusher, and your legs. We'll take the claws, and again, where that joint meets here, you're just gonna wanna use your thumbs to just kinda crack and open. Like there, and then you have a knuckle, which will just twist straight off. Same thing to the pincher claw. So there you have a lobster fully broken down and ready to cook. Cooked main lobster. So here I have a cooked lobster, and I'm gonna show you how to take all of the meat out. So starting with the arms, we'll just pinch from the joints, down and twist, twist out, and going to the back tail. Give it a twist one way and finish it out the other way. And then for the legs, snap them off. To get the tail meat out in the easiest way, these back fins here, they kind of peel right off by just snapping them back. And you'll see already the tail meat is starting to expose itself. Holding the lobster tail between your fingers in both hands, give it a squeeze one time. And then you'll turn it away from you and pull outwards. This should free up the entire tail, leaving nothing inside. Moving on to the crusher claw. 
pull this claw down on its joint away. As soon as you hear that crack, pull up on the other side to free up the bottom half and just give it like a little twist as it comes out and you should leave the claw meat still attached to the claw. From here we can separate up the knuckle and then again from the leg joint. With the crusher claw, use a heavy back knife and just give it a smack right on the fattest part there. Same thing on the other side. Once you have those two sides cracked, you can pretty much just take your hand and crush it. Careful not to destroy the meat on the inside. Wiggle that claw right out. The same thing to the pincher. Pull it straight out. For the knuckle meat, you can use a specialized tool like this, specifically made for scooping out lobster meat. Go in through one of the openings, run the tip of it along the edge of the shell, trying to stay as tight as possible and not break into any of the meat. You come in through the other side and you can just push and shimmy that knuckle meat right out. For the remaining parts of the leg, stick a skewer, the end of a spoon, something thin and non-flexible in to this first joint here and you can kind of pop right out. And that meat comes right out just like that. An often underutilized part of the lobster is actually their legs. People think that there's little to no meat in them and they don't see it as a worthwhile project to take on. It's actually really easy and pretty fun. You have a rolling pin. You lay these out flat on a cutting board and kind of like toothpaste, you can just squeeze that meat out. The meat just squeezes right out. So this is a lobster fully picked. Your crusher, your pincher, your knuckles, your leg meats, and then your remainder leg meat and your tail. Crawfish. This is a live crawfish. They're actually capable of traversing um, small distances of land. Whenever I get these in in my job, you'll find them in the office, you'll find them in the locker room, you'll find them in the bathroom. When you least expect it, you look down and there's just a crawfish waiting for you, so. And they're really fun and easy to make and eat. So if you're doing a crawfish boil, I would definitely suggest maybe 10 to 15 minutes for a big pot of them. Just let them cook with everything and pull them out once they're bright red. So here we have our cooked crawfish. They're like mini lobsters. So what you wanna do is separate that tail from the body, hold on to the tail, and just give it a twist. This is what you eat on a crawfish, but it's not the only thing you necessarily enjoy. You wanna make sure to suck out all of these delicious head juices. It's just delicious. So for the tail, these little back fins back here, peel those off quickly. Ideally, that will also remove any sort of intestinal tract. You can just peel them right out of their shell, super fast and easy. Simple as that, delicious. Langostino. Langostino is actually a catch-all term for what is a type of squat lobster. We are going to remove these back set of fins off the tail, pull right back, and just twist them off. The meat from the tail is exposed. Grabbing it in each of its sections between two fingers, I'm just going to squeeze until I hear a crack. I'm going to do that for each little segment here. This one actually has some really gorgeous blue eggs underneath it. Continue to peel the shell. Basically this thing will just peel right off in individual segments all the way down. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. Once that's done you can flip it over and just start peeling it back and just revealing that really gorgeous flesh. Snap that bottom membrane and just very gently peel it and you will be left with an absolutely gorgeous langostino. I would just barely poach this thing, or really ideally just serve it raw like this. American white shrimp. We have the head on with this guy. So what we'll do, just grab the head with one hand, grab the tail with the other hand, and you're just gonna twist it off. I have a shrimp divainer. Flatten the shrimp out in your hand and extend it. You're gonna go all along the top shell of the shrimp and then come out right before the tail. And now with our hands, we can just go in and just remove it segment by segment. You can choose to leave the tail fins on or you just peel them right off. Now what you're gonna do is run your knife just along the top of the shrimp, gently exposing where the intestinal tract will be, making sure there's nothing there. And there you will have 
a peeled and deveined shrimp. Prawn. Prawns and shrimp, very similar. Prawns have an extra set of pinchers right up in the front. We're going to peel, devein, and today we're gonna to take it one step further and I'm gonna show you how to butterfly the prawn as well. First things first, we are going to remove the head by holding onto the head and the tail separately and just twisting off. For the prawn tail, we're gonna use our deveiner. We're gonna go in straight at the top of the shell and just follow all the way down. Then with our hands, we're just gonna come back and peel everything off. And we'll use our tool to open up the tail and just remove that as well. Now, you'll see intestinal tract, some other organs in here, and we're just gonna use our hands to just make sure we get all of those out. And now that we have it cleaned up, take the sharp part of our shrimp knife here, and right where that intestinal tract was, we're just gonna follow that line, being careful not to cut all the way through the underside of the prawn. Now once you have it opened up, you can cut a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other side. Just very shallow cuts here until the prawn lays flat. And that's how you butterfly a prawn. Butterflying is particularly great for even quick cooking, but these certainly lend themselves well to being grilled shell on. You can broil them, bake them, boil them, steam them. It's just a great product to work with. Sea scallop. Live sea scallops are bivalves, which essentially means they have two shells, a top shell and a bottom shell, which are joined right at the end with a hinge. Locate the top shell, which is always going to be more rounded. And the bottom shell will always be a little more flat. Enter the scallop in from the back shell, not the top shell. I like to stand my scallop up on the hinge. Locate where the gap is. Use my knife to really wedge it open and my fingers to hold it there. I'll stick my flexi knife underneath the eyes. Peel them back slightly. Locate the muscle. And really staying tight to the back shell. I'm going slow. I'll just wiggle my knife straight down until it frees open that muscle. This lip on the outside is actually where they have a large number of eyes. You don't want to be eating any of that. You're gonna peel back the eyes, hold on to that membrane and just pull everything out. So now you're left with the main muscle attached to the bottom shell. The uh, muscle is always on one side of the scallop, slightly more than the other. So you wanna get on that closer side. Using something flexible, in a swooping motion, press down pretty hard with your knife and the scallop will slide right out. And then you have a live sea scallop. Duxbury oyster. There are lots of different types of oysters out there. Generally speaking, there's one way to shock them. You have a flat side, and then you have a cup that holds the meat. So you're gonna wanna turn the cup down on your cutting board and get a good grip on it flat. And you'll see there's a hinge here with a bit of a gap. Take your shocking knife and just get it into that gap. To get a little bit deeper, you're gonna wanna put some pressure going this way towards the front of the oyster while also wiggling. But you don't want to be pressing so hard that if you slip, you have a bad accident. There's no rush with this, you'll feel it. And once the knife is stuck in the oyster, give it another little wiggle just to crack the oyster open slightly. Take the knife out and come along this side closest to you with just the tip of your knife. You're going to be wiggling and staying very tight to that top shell until you cut the first muscle holding here. You'll do the same thing on the other side. You should have a fairly clean oyster. There's one more muscle down here that's also holding the meat onto the bottom half of the shell. So you'll come in, careful not to spill too many juices, and you'll just sort of free up that one side. And there you go, a shucked oyster ready to go. East Coast oysters are definitely a favorite amongst a lot of people, especially here on the East Coast. They have a higher salinity to them. They're more briny, so that's gonna equal more salt in the flavor of your oyster. Baywater sweets. These come from uh, the West Coast out of Washington State. Same as always, the shells on these can be a little brittle, so you will wanna take extra caution, and their hinges sometimes are covered by extra pieces of shell that kind of come up. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle until you start to feel yourself about to get in and you just pop. You're all freed up. 
And there you have a shucked West Coast oyster. I could definitely crush a dozen of these easily. Mm. European flat, also sometimes known as Ballon oysters. First step for these is to remove the band. So you find the hinge right where the two shells connect. But just don't stop wiggling, don't stop pressing, and you'll feel it start to go slightly in more until you get that pop, get that hinge free. I'm trying my best to keep the oyster as flat in my palm as possible just to not leak out all of those juices. Free up that bottom muscle. And there you have a European flat shucked oyster. I don't like these oysters, but I'm gonna taste it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's like uh, licking a battery. Prince Edward Island mussel. These mussels come from Prince Edward Island off the east coast of Canada. One important thing, if it's alive, it should be tightly shut. Or if it's open a little bit, pretty much as soon as you touch it or tap it or give it a squeeze or something like that, it should shut up by itself. Within the mussel, there's probably going to be a little bit of sand and grit. So definitely take at least a minimum of an hour uh, to purge your mussels and give them time to release that sand. Your next step is essentially going to be removing the beard of the mussel, which is what the mussel uses to attach onto rocks or if they're farmed uh, onto the ropes that they hang from. You'll find it on the flat end of the mussel. Kind of looks like hairs. So you're gonna wanna grab onto those, get a good grip on them as you wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Once you have the beard exposed a little bit more, you'll pinch it between your two fingers, really focus on the wiggling, 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 and then it'll just pop right out. And your mussels are ready to cook. Hard shell clams. Depending on where you're from, you're gonna call them something different. A little neck, a count neck, a cocktail clam. Some people will call this a top neck, a cherry stone. At the end of the day, they're all hard shell clams. You're absolutely going to need a clam knife. One side, the back of the knife, totally flat. Um, super thin blade and a slightly sharpened edge. It helps to slip into the clam easily. I like to check out the lip of the clam, find the slight gap within it, set my knife in that hinge, squeeze and sort of wiggle a little bit until you find that opening. It's gonna wanna be pretty tightly closed. So you're just gonna pop it open slightly. Once you have that gap ready, you'll come in along the sides, just scraping the very top of the clam. Cut one of the muscles that's holding it on that side and you'll do the same exact thing on the other side. Stay really tight to that top shell until you feel that pop. Once you do, you're gonna scrape that top shell until it just pops right open. Separate from one bottom hinge here, one bottom hinge on this side, free up that meat, and you have a shucked clam. I think they can stand up to oysters. Soft shell clam. Also known as a steamer clam, we're just gonna wanna do a very quick blanch, basically just a flash in the water right out and into a nice bath. You essentially just want the clam to separate from the shell and make it really easy to work with. So after blanching, you'll see that the clam has opened up. These clams burrow deep into the ground. This portion here, the siphon or the neck, is what actually comes out of the sand to retrieve water and food. Um, so we'll start with that facing upwards. Facing the clam towards you with your clam knife, you're just gonna rub along the sides and just make sure that the clam is completely separated from the shell itself, and they just fall right out after a quick blanch. You can see an extra membrane here. Peel that right off of the siphon portion. You'll see a set of gills right here, a couple of other organs. We can just peel all of that away with our clam knife, and for the neck, we can just scrape away any dark bits on both sides, you'll want to ensure that there is no sand or grit stuck in the siphon. Cut it right in half, slightly, just to take a peek inside. Give it a quick scrape. Once you have all of these cleaned, the clam is out and trimmed. This is ready for your chowder, it's ready for frying, it's ready to eat. Razor clam. The meat is very delicate on these razors, so when I prepare razor clams, I like to use a blunt object, nothing really too sharp. So I will take 
a offset spatula. There's again a top shell and a bottom shell. Find the gap. You'll see some meat being attached to the membrane on the top shell, same on the side shell. Enter in really tight onto that top shell and just start peeling away the membrane. Making sure you take your time to get everything off. Once that side's free, flip it. We're gonna do the same exact thing to the other side. And once it's open, the top shell should just peel right off. Scrape out anything that's stuck. You have the foot, you have the siphon, and when you flip it, you'll see the belly and the intestinal tract of the clam. I'm gonna grab a small knife, and we're just going to trim away the belly, the foot, just tougher, more nasty parts that you don't necessarily wanna eat. Occasionally, there are grits of sand within the siphon itself. Straighten it out as best you can, and using a sharp knife, not cutting all the way through, just being very gentle to open up that siphon. You can see it's pretty clean. We'll give it a little rinse. And what I like to do, just really thin slices of razor. I think they have like a really beautiful, sweet flavor to them. Gently pan seared is great, but uh, raw is the way to go. Gooey duck. Gooey duck are definitely some of the more unique looking shellfish that we're gonna be working with today. This is a West Coast shellfish. They're the largest burrowing clam, very sought after, uh, well known in the sushi community. First steps when looking to prepare a gooey duck, uh, you're gonna need to purge it. Basically, you're going to submerge it in salt water for at least an hour. Your next step is going to be a quick blanch in some boiling water, uh, 15 seconds, right into an ice bath. This will allow the gooey duck to separate from the shell. Also will allow us to remove any extra membranes that might be tough and make uh, the preparation of the gooey duck more difficult. So let's blanch it now. Our gooey duck is now blanched, and we're gonna point the opening of the shell out to you. Come in here and put your knife right up against that shell and really just follow that line. You wanna be very careful to not puncture the actual meat of the gooey duck. Once that side is free, you're gonna do the same exact thing up on the other side until everything is freed. We'll free this little part here. See, this is your gooey duck. Out of the shell, there are a few parts here that we're not going to want to eat. This siphon has a membrane over it, so it gets connected down from all the way at the bottom. You'll just release some of the extra and just start to peel it off. In this rounded area, you're gonna have the stomach and the belly. So we're gonna remove that. And you can see it kind of hangs off. We're just gonna come in and go straight down like that. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. So this will go. This will get split pretty much into these sections here. We're gonna wanna open this siphon up uh, just to ensure that there's no sand or grit or anything like that in there. Making sure to make shallow cuts just enough to get it open. I don't wanna cut it directly in half. It's in there, we can see a little bit of sand and just pour it off. And uh, we have some extra organs in here that we're gonna wanna clean up. So just gently with the tip of your knife, we're gonna run it just along the edges. It is hollow right behind it, so your knife will slip through if you're not careful. Same thing to the other side. And we'll just peel this right out. And we'll trim the edges there. You'll notice some discoloration on the siphon itself here when you're working with the product from uh, live to finish. So if we get some salt here and some water, I'm gonna actually use that salt to scrub the outside, rinse off any excess salt, and you can see already the color is starting to brighten up on them. Slice it super thin, enjoy it raw. It's just a clam. Don't let its appearance deter you from picking one up if you see them. Cockle. Cockles have been described as more complex than hard shell clams. They just have an extra level of savory, an extra level of umami, an extra level of ocean goodness. Similar to an oyster, we will go in where the hinge meets and we're just gonna wiggle, just wiggle until you feel that pop, which just happened. You're gonna run the knife really tightly along the top shell there, you do it to both sides, and you're gonna free up any little bit of meat. On the bottom there, you'll do the same thing, cutting the muscle that connects the cockle. There you have a shucked cockle. Abalone. 
Abalone is a type of sea snail, super well known and sought after for their really white, uh, firm meat, um, which can be quite expensive, and also for their really gorgeous mother of pearl shells. Really beautiful creature. So, to prepare an abalone, what I like to do is I'll take a offset spatula, blunted object, and you just go in around the sides of the shell and start freeing up the meat. Getting under that membrane as best as you can until it is freed up from the shell. So when you pop the abalone out of the shell, you'll see uh, just a stunning array of colors on the inside of their shell, and you'll see a hot mess of a shellfish in front of you. I'm gonna show you how to clean that up now. The white meat here is what you're gonna wanna get at. Um, there are some organs around it. Those all just come right off. And just by hand, start peeling off extra stuff here. I mean, this meat is just really, really firm, really beautiful. We'll give it a quick little rinse just to get off some of this extra stuff. So using a small paring knife, I'm essentially just gonna start trimming any little extra black parts. Should come off if you just scrape it. That's a shucked, cleaned, and trimmed abalone. Conch. This is a type of sea snail. They live 20 to 30 years, actually, so they get fairly big as they get older. Uh, they actually grow with their shell. So first, you wanna identify your crown of spikes. They'll have one larger one here, something a little smaller, and then a tiny one around the spiral. What you're gonna need to do is make a hole in the shell between uh, the second and third. Well, you wanna just sort of tap slightly, just break them away little pieces at a time. From here, I'm gonna use my offset spatula, something without an edge, and I'm just gonna go along the top of the shell and just sort of run the spatula along that shell just to free up the snail from inside. So just take your time, don't force it. Just going on all different angles. There we go. You'll get a grip of that foot and just start to pull it out. Down here, this is a hard shell. You're just going to trim that away. You just wanna trim away any sort of dark stuff on there. You are left with a really nice, firm piece of shellfish that lends itself really well to being sliced very, very thin. I mean, this is great for sashimi, but I mean, I suggest almost all shellfish be tried raw at least once. And that's how you prep a conch. West Coast sea urchin. So they're covered in spines. This is essentially their defense mechanism. It's how they move around. It's how they capture food that they're gonna get. They have a set of extremely delicious row sacs within them. Uh, that most people will know as uni. You wanna be very careful not to get pricked by the uh, spines. Handle them gently. Flip them over. That is the urchin's mouth. I like to use a little paring knife for this, and we're just gonna go right around where the mouth is and just free that up for us so we can get our scissor in. There will be fa a fair amount of liquid. And again, I'm not going super deep. You just wanna be enough so that it's free. We'll take a bowl, and we're just going to dump out any liquid that's in there. And we'll pull the beak out. We're just gonna dump all that out. If you look closely, there are some divisions within the way that the urchin is set up. You wanna take a pair of shears and get in kind of in between one of those sections and just make a cut. We can do another one on the other side. And we're just looking to pretty much meet these two cuts and just start trimming. And they kind of just peel right off. You can see already the really beautiful bright orange row that's starting to expose itself. And just all of this is in the way, so we're just gonna get rid of that. Pretty much you can just shake it out. You can use your finger. I like to use a little offset spatula. And just free anything up that's getting stuck. Being super mindful of those really delicate row sacs that you don't want to disturb. You can really start seeing them now. Take a slotted spoon where the row sack was attached to that top layer. You'll come in with the tip of your spoon and pretty much just start scooping them out. And they pretty much just hug the side of the urchin. So you just wanna follow the same shape that the urchin has naturally. I'm gonna take the row sacks my spatula and my spoon, and just gently drop them into the water. 
get in there with your hand. Shake them a little bit, very gently, just to knock off any of that extra organs that are on there. You are ready to enjoy one of the most delicious things in the sea, sea urchin roe. You can just put it on your hand like so, and just super delicious. East Coast sea urchin. Looks really different than the West Coast variety, but the procedure's still exactly the same. Turn it around onto its back, only using the very, very tip of my knife. And we're just gonna dump out all of the excess liquid and seawater and we'll pull the beak out. We're gonna go in straight across. We'll do the same thing to the opposite side. And then we're gonna start working our way around removing the bottom section. Not going too deep, not rushing. We're gonna dump out, again, any excess liquid that's in here. Oh, one guy already fall out. They wanna come out of the urchin. You remove any of those extra organs that are stuck on there. Submerge this into water, and we'll start retrieving these row sacs. And there, really gorgeous, East Coast, Sea urchin row. Nothing's better than urchin, honestly. <laughs> this is great. So hopefully today, I've uh, taken some of the fear out of bringing home live shellfish. It takes a little bit of practice. Don't be afraid to make any mistakes. Aside from acquiring new skills for your culinary tool belt, just really take your time and appreciate uh, what you have in front of you and appreciate everything that the ocean has to offer.